Assalamualaikum. I see you. That's it. Both of you gave me, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, so sorry. If you're so bad. You're not in the class group. <laughs> I know she's, she's still not in. Oh, she's not in there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You know, when, when somebody else is over there, you go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the trip, the trip will be there. <laughs> yeah, it kept to me one of the day. One of the like, day. <laughs> it came, then I was like, okay, I'll just see that one. It's very right past me. How are you? Yeah. Alright. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa bari wa salim. Na wa ta ta'animu wa ta'anim wa ta'kura wa ta'zkir wa nafa' wa nintifa' wa lifarata wa l-istifada wa al-hatha ala tamasuki bi kitab ilahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a'a ila al-huda wa dalalah ala al-khayr ibtagha'a wa jila wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a nutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamu ar-rahimin Allahumma ala sadika al-alma al-aduni wa al-mashrub al-sufi al-hani wa habi ghani Allahumma ala sadika al-alma al-aduni wa al-mashrub al-sufi al-hani wa habi ghani اللهم انا سدك العلم من الدنيا والمشرب الصوفي الهني يهب يغني صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين امين right alhamdulillah the last time round we stopped if i'm not wrong where do we stop at the hut do you finish the hut at the five states of the heart, right? The heart, right? Uh, I'll go. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I stop at the heart and I say I'll go back to it. Okay. So here, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I'm going to begin the, the, the chapter of the heart again eh? Let's just restart the chapter It's just revision Right, so Al-Fasl Rabi'un Al-Qalb Right, the first The first uh, sec- the, the fourth section Which is the heart uh, Imam Ghazali He's going through every uh, Of the limbs of the human being uh, Especially the limbs Whereby a lot of sins Will emit from Right, it will, it will fall into sin Right, and also A lot of uh, good deeds And righteous deeds And obedience Will come from these limbs Right, so we have reached the heart And the heart is actually The most important one and it's the most difficult one. Right? Because if the heart is corrupt, as you mentioned in the hadith, everything is corrupt. If the heart is sound, then everything is sound. Right? So, uh, we mentioned, I'm just going to briefly mention the, 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 the foundations or the principles you know, of why it's so important for us to cut over the heart. Right? The first one was Allah Subhanahu statement whereby He says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِ السُّرُورِ وَقَوْلُ تَعَالَى وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ So the first, the first uh, asal, I mean the first, the first uh, principle as to what will make you guard over your heart is that Allah looks into your heart. Right, that's it. Right, that is the first, uh, that is, I mean Allah knows what goes on in your heart. Just by that, right, you should feel, uh, you should feel shame lah of what actually runs in your heart. The second one, قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تعالى لا ينظر إلى سوركم وإلى أجسادكم وأبش وأبشاركم وإنما ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم. I for surely Allah does not look at your physical features, nor your bodies, nor your you know outward form. Rather, He looks at your heart and your deeds. Right. So that is the way Allah Subhanahu will judge us. Right, not on our outward physical form. We went through that also. The third one, وَأَنَّ الْقَلْبَ مَلِكٌ مُطَاعٌ وَرَئِيسٌ مُتَّبِعٌ Right, that the heart is obeyed by the limbs. Right, so so if you want your followers to be rectified, the leader has to be rectified. If the leader is corrupt, the followers will be corrupt. Right, naturally so. Allah, I mean, the followers follow the leader, and the heart is the leader. Right, of all of your limbs. So if you rectify your heart, you have rectified your limbs. That's why it is a false statement for people right, who outwardly they commit sins, right? 
uh, and they say, you know, I have a good heart. Uh, it's, it's not. I mean, how can that, how can how can a person say that? Uh, if you if you're if you're if you're sitting sitting against Allah subhanahu wa taala outwardly and not feeling any shame about it, and then you say, I have a good heart, or but I have a good heart. If you have a good heart, it would manifest in your actions. It would manifest, right? So in that in itself is a statement that is contradictory. It's a contradicting statement. How, how can you and and then how can you use that statement to justify the sins that you do? Right, so you hear people say, you know, that I do all these sins, but I have a good heart. As if they're justifying the sins with the good heart that they claim for themselves. <laughs> Which is the entire whole thing, the whole thing is problematic in and of itself, right? You, first and foremost, you claim you have a good heart, <laughs> right? I mean, no scholar or ulama or, awli or wali or saint has ever in the history of Islam claimed they have a good heart. And no one, no one claimed for themselves, I have a good heart. <laughs> I mean, that, that itself is a very problematic statement. I have a good heart. <laughs> right? People say you have a good heart, right? but you don't go around saying, oh, I have a good heart. <laughs> I mean, that, how in the world does it, what does the person say that? Right? How do you tell me? Right? How does someone, subhanAllah, eh? like, 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 like how, I don't know, some people who say that, you know, I have a good heart, like, interesting. Eh? <laughs> how, how could someone reach that point whereby you self-proclaim that your heart is sound? Right. And then, and then on top of that, they use that statement to, to justify the sins that they are doing. Right. So I don't have to do this particular act of obedience because, you know, uh, I do this other uh, this, this 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 sin right, or this disobedience, but I have a good heart. Right. As if you know, in a sense, it makes it okay right, to sin. So, so the entire thing, the entire no, uh, notion is uh, is problematic. <laughs> right, for able to do so. So Imam Ghazali says that the heart is obeyed. Right, so if someone really wants to know the, the state of his heart, he looks at what he is inclined to, you know, of deeds. So if, it's, if he finds it very hard to do acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, to do, to do uh, ta'at, right, uh, to do acts of worship, then there is something really wrong in his heart. There's a big problem in his heart. Right? And in fact, uh, uh, previously in the same chapter, Imam Ghazali mentions about the night prayer. If you find it very hard to get up in the night, to pray in the night, you find it very, very hard, right? then that is a sign that you have a lot of diseases and sins still plaguing you down, right? not allowing you to wake up. Right? It's basically you're being shackled by your sins and by your uh, diseases. So you cannot wake up in the night prayer today. <laughs> I mean, it's a statement that Imam Ghazali said it, not me. Because for me, I'm also guilty. Like, you know, it's just so hard. You get up and you're so sleepy, and you want to sleep again. You get up and you pray, and you want to sleep again, and you get up. And then you're like, then you're you sleep. <laughs> like, 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 in a sense, you know, it's, subhanAllah, it's all our sins, our darknesses, our sins, our diseases, right? That's pulling us uh, down. All right. The fourth one, so we went through all of this, right? And then we went to the fourth one, right? The fourth, which is basically, Anna uh, Qalba. Uh, right, so ثم أنواع العلوم والحك والحك والحكم والحك والحكم التي هي شرف العبد وسائر الأخلاق الشريفة والخسال الحميدة التي بها تفا تفاضل الرجال على ما فضلنا وشرحنا على ما فصلنا وشرحنا في كتاب أسرار مع مع معاملات الدين Right, so and if the fourth, the fourth uh, principle or the fourth basis right, as to why one should guard over the heart is because the heart it is the treasure chest of a lot of jewels and gems. Right, a treasure chest of a lot of uh, gems that, 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 that a human being has. For example, uh, sincere intention. For example, uh, the, no, the notice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your heart is the chest. Right, I mean, literally, it's a chest. <laughs> your heart is a, a treasure chest whereby you keep all these gems, right? and these are all things that are expensive, and they are, uh, they are expensive, and they are valuable in Islam, right? of having righteous intentions, of knowing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. All of these things are kept in the chest, right? So if your heart right, is corrupt, 
or dirty, you know, or whatever lah, foul, right? Then all of these things that are expensive, all of these things that are, are valuable, right? All of these things will be tainted, right? But what by the filth that you carry in your heart, may Allah subhanahu wa taala cleanse our hearts and protect us from that. Right? So now this is where we have left off. Number five, eh? That was all revision, eh? Number five. All right. Al aslu al khamisu anni ta'amaltu hala ahalahu. فوجدت له خمسة أحوال ليس لغيره من أعضاء ابن آدم. Right. So Imam Ghazali says, so I was thinking about the situation of this heart, right? And I found that the heart has five states or five situations that the other limbs of the body they do not have, right? That the heart specifically has. So what are these five things? The first one, أحدها أن العدو قاصد إليه. مقبل عليه ملازم له فإن الشيطان جاسم على قلب ابن آدم الأيسر فهو فهو منزل الإلهام والوسوسة. Right. So here Imam Ghazali says that okay, the first thing it is that that the heart it is an enemy. Okay, the heart it is the place that the enemy is attacking. And that's the first one I mentioned last week. I mentioned two weeks ago. Right, but we're going to go through it in detail. The heart is the spot that the enemy attacks. Right, so when it comes to that war, right, the enemy will usually attack the headquarters. Right, if you can get the headquarters, you can get the entire uh, army. Right, so this is the place whereby the enemy is attacking. Right, and it is said that the enemy is is always facing it. It is always uh, intending it, and it will keep going towards it. So you see the shaitan squats in the left side of the heart. He squats there. And that's where his, 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 his house is there. The, the left part of the heart is the house of shaitan. He squats there, he stays there. <laughs> right, and this shaitan, right, when we look at uh, Surah Nas, right, it describes the, the tafsir of Surah Shaitan. Shaitan has like a snout, like a trunk or a snout. Right, and what he does is that he sits at the heart of a human being and he places his snout on the heart. Of a human being, and he begins to whisper. He will whisper, 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 whisper. Right. So of course you say, "Awwal billahi min shaitan rajim." He runs away. Right. But only for a while. The moment you forget Allah subhanahu wa taala, he comes back. Right. So he's not like he's not a one-off enemy that you can chase away. He runs away. No. You say one time he runs away. You forget only he comes back. And you say another time he goes away. You forget only he comes back. Right. So shaitan he will keep you know doing this. Uh, this he will keep going away, come back. Is that he's called? Uh, the the khanas the khanas is the one that disappears appears disappears appears disappears appears right that is shaitan so the problem with the heart is that unlike all your other limbs right shaitan is actually focused and aiming the heart of the human being right whenever he comes to human being the first place he will go is the heart and he will sit there right, and he will he will not go anywhere else right? he will stay in the heart of the human being. <laughs> Hmm. Can in this gate be kept closed? Are you always going to toilet, Ken? But if not, keep it closed, okay? <laughs> go toilet, Ken. <laughs> that that stairs. So many small kids have fallen off. Stairs there. Hmm. All of them one by one. <laughs> huh? Hey, Zara. Hey. Hey Zara. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So it. Uh... All right. So from there, it is a place of. It is a place of the whispers of Shaitan. Right, and also uh, the inspiration of the angels. Remember, we have the angel called Ilham. Right, in the previous part, Imam Ghazali mentions that the uh, in the presentation of the Shaitan, he mentions about this angel called Ilham. Right, he keeps he keeps sitting near the human being and he whispers uh, good things to the human beings to do. Right, and then every human being has a Qarin. Right, so the Qarin and the Ilham, they are basically like fighting lah, right, the human beings. So, like when they have all those uh, like cartoons, right, whereby they have like the, the, the devil and the angel, it's true. It actually happens to a human being. Right? You actually have this angel that follows you around and this devil that follows you around. Right? And they are whispering to you at all times. And you get to choose which one you want to 
uh, follow lah uh, basically and uh, so the heart is the place it is a manzil it is a house of this angel and the shaitan that follow you around right so it, uh, uh, they're always with him and they're always calling him to two separate ways it's on him to follow what they say right and so it is the angel and the shaitan so that is the first thing the heart is different from the rest of the limbs right the, it is the place of whisperings right? or the, en- the enemy uh, uh, attacks it the second thing that makes the heart different right from uh, oh and just now i mentioned about the shaitan's his 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 snout so the way the ulama describe shaitan's snout is like a hawk's snout like a hawk you know a hawk a, 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 a pig la a hawk Right, the uh, wild boar, wild boar, right, a wild boar. They have, they have a snout, jangan itu, and the the shaitan snout is like that. Right, so it it goes up to the the heart of a human being. It's disgusting. Eh? <laughs> I always say the kids kind of stories. Kau isn't that tough? Is that tough? Is right there. Right, just now, just now the the Isra Mi'raj, the the story of the of some went past the grave of Nabi Musa, and they found Nabi Musa praying in the grave. They were all surprised by it, by that the primary school kids ah, they were like, huh, can pray in the grave? I said, yeah, the grave is like a room. Right, it can be paradise, it can be hellfire in there, and then he say, why people don't pray in the world? Can they pray in the grave? Oh, then I come all the stories about people who don't pray in the world. Uh, what happens to them in the grave? <laughs> all true stories, all true stories. Of what happens to people who don't pray in the world? What happens to them in the grave? Right, Halil? Right, Halil? I told the stories. Right, what happens to people who don't pray in the world? What happens to them in the grave? Ah, uh, and then God, that I told about, I told about the. Ah, it's true. It's all hadis, all hadis, all hadis. The snake will come at the beginning of the prayer time and and beat him until the other prayer time, right? Uh, so this is when at seven years old to make them pray. <laughs> I mean, like basically, it's, it's true. It's all from hadis. All of it from hadis, right? About what happens to people in the grave when they don't pray in in this. So the first thing that they will face in the in the grave is the consequences of their not not praying. And it's the most important thing, eh? But it's the most neglected thing in our time, right? Prayer. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from that. All right. So, Mr. Muhammad, right? Uh, so the second one, right? Uh, also, so, so, so about the shaitan, right? So the thing about it is that this snout that the shaitan has on the heart of the human being is there when the heart of the human being is heedless of Allah subhanahu wa taala. When the heart of the human being remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this shaitan, gets, uh, he gets repelled. Right? So, even if the tongue of a human being is not remember, is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the heart is not. Like for example, in prayer. Right? So, in prayer, the tongue is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the heart is heedless. The heart is, is thinking about all kinds of things. The snout is there. The snout is there, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. Right? So, only when the heart begins to remember, the snout gets thrown away. Right, of shaitan right. So that is the, the, the key eh? so You're wondering How come But I still get You know whispers But I'm re- in, my, in my prayer Because you, the heart Is not remembering So the snout Is connected to the heart So when the heart Begins to remember It has to leave right, But when the heart As long as the heart Is heatless The snout can rest there right, So shaitan Does not want to Keep running back and forth right, So he will do All he can To allow his Permanent residence To be your heart I just have to keep running back and forth. I have for shaitan. Eh? Right, that's what it says. So it says here that it is really the remembrance of the heart or the heedlessness of the heart that causes shaitan to come back or to run away. Alright. Second one was Thani. Let me just see if I left out anything. Uh, muraqaba. Last week we spoke about Muraqaba. Eh? So Muraqaba is about knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Wa anna laqalba alayhi am. Okay, that one is it. I went through it last week. Alright. So here, the second one, Asani, an an the shughla lahu akthar, fa in al hawa wal aqla kilahu ma fihi, fa huwa muat muat huwa muataraku al al askarin al hawa wa junudihi wal aqla wa junudihi, wa huwa abadan bina bina tuha bina tuharibihi ma taharubihi ma. وَتَحَارُبُهِ تَحَارُبِهِمَا وَتَقَاتُلِهِمَا وَتَنَاقُضِهِمَا وَحَقَّتْ صَغْرِ أَنْ يُحْرَسَ وَيُحَصَّنَ وَلَا يُغْفَلَ عَنْهُ Right, so now the, sh- the, 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 the thing about the heart It's the second thing that makes the heart different from the other limbs eh? The heart is always very busy right? It's in constant engage- engagement 
Right? Why? Because there are two enemies at war in the heart. Right? Or there are two armies at war in the heart. What are the two armies? The mind, the aql. Right? So here you see that the ulama by consensus, you see the mind is in the heart. Right? It's not in the brain. <laughs> right? The mind by consensus is in the heart. Right? Because the Quran says they have hearts but they do not think with their hearts. Right? So you will see in the book of the ulama, whenever we talk about the mind, we are talking about the heart. Right? No one ever ascribes the mind to the brain. <laughs> it's only in our time whereby people think the mind is here. The mind is not here. The mind is in the heart. Right? You think with your heart. Right? Your, your brain is able to, uh, to, to absorb information. So your brain does. Information, memory, all that is, is your brain. But thinking happens in the heart. When you ponder, you think, right? you consider, it's all the heart right? that, that, that does that. So in the heart, the akal is there and the hawa is there. Right, the hawa nafsu, right, the, the, the lower desire, the hawa nafsu and the, and the aqal is there. And there are two separate armies that's in the heart that's always engaging in uh, combat. Right, basically, they're always fighting inside the heart. Right, so it's continuously happening in the heart. Right? Uh, they're always uh, uh, fighting. So, so this occupies the human being. Right, so he's forever between their fightings and their uh, arguments. Right? And, and because of that, Right, the heart gets distracted. Gets it's always, you know, in, in it's always being engaged. Right, so this is the second thing that makes the heart different from other limbs. Other limbs are able to rest. The heart does not rest. <laughs> right, the heart is constantly in the situation until it dies. And while your other limbs can rest, your heart will not, because your heart will keep on going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it's called the qalb. Right, the qalb means the one that flips. Right, uh, qalaba. Uh, qalaba in Arabic, qalaba. It means to flip. Because right, the heart flip, 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 flip. And your whole life will be at that until you die. Right, that's why it's called Ya Ayyatuhan Nafsul Mutmainna. Right, the soul that is at rest. Only when you die, then you become at rest. Right, before you die, it's going to be a struggle all the way until, until you die, basically. <laughs> there's, no, there's no end to it. Even in your last moment, Shaitan will still, will still work on you. Because for Shaitan, it's really a matter of you know, like how many people he can get into, into the hellfire. Right, so he's not going to let anybody enter paradise for free, right? Without without a fight, lah. Right, so every human being has a shaitan attached to him to ensure that he will struggle in this life, right? And and, and the shaitan will try his best to put him to the hellfire. The third one, wa anna al awa wa anna al awa rida lahu aksaru, fa inna al khawatira lahu kasiham la tazalu taqau fihi kal wa kal matari. لا ت لا تزال تمطر عليه ليلا ونهارا لا تقطع لا تقطع عنه ولا أنت تقدر على منعها فتمتنع فتمتنع وليس هو بمنزلة العين التي بين جف جفنين جفنين وتغمض فتستريح وَتَكُونُ فِي مَوْضِعٍ حَخَالٍ أَوْ لَيْلٍ مُظْلِمٍ فَتُكْفَارُ يَتَهَا أَوْ لِسْ أَوْ أَوْ لِسَانِ الَّذِي هُوَ وَرَاءَ الْحِجَابَيْنِ الْأَسْنَا الْأَسْنَانِ وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَأَنْتَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَى مَنْعِهِ وَتَسْكِينِهِ بل القلب غرض للخواطر لا تقد لا تقدر على منعها وت 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 وتحفظ وتحفظ عنها بحال ولا هي تنقطع عنك بوقت ثم النفس مسارعة إلى اتباعها والامتناع عن ذلك في 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 مجهود الطاقة أمر شديد ومحنة عظيمة. Right. So, so the third thing that he mentions about the heart is that the heart has complete exposure, and the heart is always completely exposed to everything around it. Right, that is the state of the heart. Unlike your other limbs, right? For example, he says your eyes. Your eyes, you can close your eyes. Right, you can, you know, if you're in a dark place, you won't see things. Right, for your ears, you can close your ears. For your tongue, you can close your mouth. Right, so all your other limbs, they have, they have like doors on them. You can shut the door right, on them. The heart, you can't do that. Right, the heart is an, an exposed uh, limb of yours. Right, that, that you cannot, you, there is no way for you to shut your heart. Right, you cannot, there's no door to close. Right, so it is the most exposed to what is around it. Right, and every, every thought 
right? every thought that other people have, right, if they say in front of you, go straight to your heart. Right? Every every comment, you know, every idea, every whatever that goes on around you goes directly to your heart. Right? And then it causes all kinds of like, you know, disturbances and you like wish I wish you didn't hear it, and they want to, to, to know about it. I don't know. Right? The heart is completely exposed, right, to a lot of uh, to, to everything that is around it. Eh? Right. So he says here. Right, so this is the, 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 the third thing about the heart that is different from the other limbs. Right, so unlike the other limbs, the heart has no way of uh, guarding itself against external exposures or thoughts. And nobody is able to control, control right, what enters into the heart. It's very hard to control what enters the heart. Number four, Imam Ghazali says, وَالرَّابِعُ أَنَّ الْعِلَاجُهُ عَلَيْكَ عَسِيرٌ إِذْ هُوَ غَيْبٌ عَنْكَ uh, right, so the third one is that the heart is the most that the cure for the heart is the most difficult. Alhamdulillah, Imam Ghazali. Eh? <laughs> it makes it sound so bleak. <laughs> you're going through one after another after that. But the thing about it is that Imam Ghazali, he does this. Basically to give you the, the truth of the matter. This is the truth of the matter. Right? He, he's not going to sugarcoat for us. He's not going to say it's, it's easy. He's not going to say... No, Imam Ghazali, he's, he's one scholar that he will... He's those kind of people who will tell you this is what it is. Right? This is what it is. You're going to work hard. Right? And thereafter, it's Allah will have mercy on you. May Allah have mercy on you. That's all. Right? So he's just kind of like scholars about it. You know, that's why they say that only the hypocrites hate Imam Ghazali. Right? It's a sign of hypocrisy to decide Imam Ghazali because Imam Ghazali's books, they're very practical. And they're very like in your face. <laughs> right? He does not care to sugarcoat. He doesn't care to make it easy. He doesn't care. Like he, tells you it, he tells it as it is. Imam Ghazali. Right, so it's a sign of hypocrisy if someone does not like the works of Imam Ghazali. It's a sign of hypocrisy. Right, because he really, like he, 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 like you know, if you have wounds in your body, right, he presses every wound to show you, here God, here God, here God, here God, here God. <laughs> and he, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> like, like, because he, he will press every part. Right, that's what he does. Right, and then he will give you the solution right, of how you're going to cure this. Right, for now, he's, doing, he's pressing all the wounds. Right, because it's all true. It's all true. Right, for me, when I... Even teaching it also like, it's all there, it's exposed, <laughs> exposed, it's all there. So the heart, the curing of the heart is the most difficult. As compared to your other limbs, right, to, 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 to uh, remove this of that is the most difficult, right, because it is the one that is inside of you. It is the limb that is inside of you. The fifth one he says, وَأَنَّ الْآفَاتِ إِلَيْهِ أَسْرَعْ فَهُوَ Right, so and the thing about the heart is that it is fastest to run towards what destroys it. The heart. Right? The heart runs so quick to what destroys it. Like for example, we know that jealousy is a disease. Or oh, the heart runs towards jealousy. And you see something you don't like, or oh, jealous straight away. And you have to fight it. Right? And or the heart straight away runs towards arrogance. I want to feel arrogant. But, or the heart runs towards showing off. It runs, it knows all of these things will destroy it, but it runs to it. Right? It runs to attach itself to the world. And hope dunya. Right, so it does, the heart knows all of these things will not bring it happiness. It will not. The heart knows that. Right? The heart knows that, that, uh, that it will not bring success in the next world. And this will also. Right? All of these diseases, all of these uh, uh, sins of the heart, they bring you destruction in this world before the next world. And we all know that. We all know it. <laughs> it does. Right? But the heart just goes to it. For some, you know, that's the way the heart is. La. The heart just goes to it. Right? So the heart runs towards things that will destroy it very quickly. 
it has this tendency to do, to do so, right? And it and it will, and, it, and it loves to flip back, right, to its lower state. Oh, my Sayyidina Muhammad. She wants a doll, is it? Uh, no, but she wants a doll, is it? Yes, she wants a doll. <laughs> Siala. No. <laughs> is it okay? <laughs> I need to give her. <laughs> ah, go go go. <laughs> All right. So, so these are the five things that Imam Ghazali has has uh, identified. These five things is what makes the heart different from the other limbs, right? So the first one, right, is that it is the enemy attacks it. Uh, it is the focal point of the enemy. Second one, it is continuously busy. Right? It never rests. The heart never rests. Right? Second, third one right, is that uh, it is fully exposed. And there's no way of covering right, the heart. Right? The, 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 the fourth one, the cure is very difficult for the heart. Right? And the fifth one right, is that it runs towards destruction. It tends to just incline towards uh, destruction. Right, and it always uh, flips back to its lowest state easily. And so you know sometimes like, like you, you try very hard right, to cleanse your heart. You really try very hard right, to go into a higher spiritual state right, if, if your heart and because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the moment you stop trying, your heart toop, goes right back. <laughs> right, he does not stay where he is. He just he will just go right back to laziness, goes right back to you know, like, whatever you've been trying to do, all London. That's what the heart does. The heart likes to fall back. And it likes to stay where it is because it's hard work. It's hard work. It likes to go back and then just go and be lazy again. Right? So like for example, like you try very hard right, to ponder over the Quran, to open up the Quran, learn the Quran. It's like, I have to do this, I have to do this. Right? But then the moment you stop, the heart's like, okay, let go. Let go all together, let go. <laughs> and let's go back to how we were before the entire thing. Uh, this is what this, this, this is what it means that like the heart loves to to, 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 to slide down right, back to what it was. It doesn't want to stay where it wants. So it's a lot of work, lah. It's a lot of work, right? That's the heart. That's what he's telling us. It's a lot of work, right? So now he's gonna say, "So ma inna zalla al qalbu wal ayazu billah, fa zalla fa zalla hu azim, fa zalla hu azimun, wa wqoohu asabu wa aqzau." Adnahu qaswatun wa mailun ila ghayri Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala muntaha muntahahu khatmun wa wa nakaratun lillahi ta'ala amma tasma'u qawlu ta'ala aba wa stakbara wa kana minal kafirin fa kana al kibru بِقَلْبِهِ وَحَمْلَهُ عَلَى الْإِبَاءِ عَلَى الْإِبَاءِ وَالْكُفْرِ بِظَاهِرِهِ Right, so he says that, and that the heart slipping, right, the heart, you know, slipping and going back to what it is, and then may Allah protect us from it, right, he says that it is something, it is a great uh, catastrophe. And when the heart slips, it's a great catastrophe, right, because when it falls, when the heart f- slips and when it falls, it's very difficult to pull it back up. Very difficult. Especially when the heart becomes, uh, you know, disillused. Or the heart becomes, you know, like discouraged lah. Try, try, try discouraged. Try, try discouraged. You know, discouraged. So when the heart keeps happening, they happen to it. After what, it doesn't want to try anymore. The heart is like, you know, very strong with the marajok thing. <laughs> the heart. Very strong. Very strong. You will try. It's not working. It's not working. I give up. Ah. Give up ah. Whatever. Ah. Give up. Ah. Right, so like for example, the heart knows this person has a very strong temper. Try and try and try and try not to lose it, not to lose it, not to lose it. Keep losing it. After one, right, the heart, if you don't keep trying, the heart will just give up. Right, give up. 
So Imam Ghazali says that the slipping of the heart, right, the the uh, lowest right of its of its uh, negative effects is that the heart becomes hardened and it becomes attached or it leans on what is besides Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The harding that is the least of its effects. The slipping uh, hardened. It gets hardened. That means it does not hear any more advice. It does not hear any more anything. It doesn't want to hear anything at all. It becomes hardened. Right? And then it begins to attach to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the least of it. Eh? That's the least of it. <laughs> it's not going to the worst of it. That's the least of it. Right? It becomes hardened and it becomes attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Like, like, you know, for example, it's somebody who keeps dua to Allah, dua to Allah, dua to Allah. Like they wake up at Fatah Hajjur, they try to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But then like they find themselves, no, they're still committing sin. They're still this, they're still that, they're still whatsoever. After a while, like, if you read all these this articles of people who leave God, you know, when they leave the religion all that, like there was, there, there's a point whereby they actually feel discouraged like, of what is going on. Their heart becomes discouraged. So they leave it. And they leave it all together and then they say, you know what, I'm just going to attach to other things. Right, and then they find strength, they find purpose, they find you know uh, support in everything else except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, and whenever someone tries to come and, and warn them, no, you can't do this. You must lean on Allah Subhanahu. You must lean to Allah Subhanahu. They become very hardened to this kind of speech. So they become like a, like a blindness, right? Because it's like the heart is disillusioned. It's a disillusion of the heart. The heart does not want to hear it, right? And the 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 heart wants to because it's easier. And also because he, he, he will mention the heart hurts easily, right? and we know we are we are very aware of it. Uh, the heart hurts easily. So when the heart hurts one time, like the heart does not want to f- want to forgive ever again. That's it. Hurt one time, done. Right? That's it. Right? So so, so you know, Allah Subhanahu forgives us over and over again. Right? But we all, you know, one time happened, never again. Right? Never again will I will I you know uh, uh, allow for myself you know or try. Right, to, to get over my diseases right, Because I try and I try And then it's still Allah is not answering my dua I try to pray every night My dua is still not answered I, You know the heart It's an arrogant heart lah. It's such an arrogant heart right, that, Where they express Allah subhanahu To answer its duas right, So here he says He's saying here That the least of the heart slipping Or the heart's falling away From the right path Is that it becomes hardened Towards any advice And it connects Or it attaches Or leans on Whatever is other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It begins to find other sources of happiness, of peace, of tranquility and support. And it begins to find some, something else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And the worst of it, right, is that it gets closed off. It gets completely closed off. And it means full wall. Right? So this is, this is not the same as uh, being hardened Hardened means that It's not affected right? But there is still no wall But closed off means Completely cannot hear anything right, Of this religion Completely closed off And it is a blindness That is very dangerous eh? May Allah protect us from that And he says Have you not heard the words of Allah Subhanahu in the Quran Where Allah Subhanahu says And he turned And was, and was er- and He turned away And he refused And he was arrogant And he was of the disbelievers Right, and that is uh, Abu Jahal, if I'm not wrong. Eh? Abu Jahal was described to be this. Right, and then he says, So, how can so, so arrogance right, in the heart will carry a person eventually to disbelief and disobedience? Arrogance in the heart, right, because the heart being arrogant, right, will, will ascribe to itself you know, what it thinks it deserves. So, if Allah subhanahu does not give it what it, what it thinks it deserves. Then it can go into kufr of this belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether. You know, like, like, I mean, it's scary. Like, you, you know, of people who they have reached that point in their life whereby they become so upset for what has happened to them in life. They become upset with God for allowing it to happen. So when they're upset with God for allowing it to happen, what do they do? They turn entirely away from God. And it means like they, they don't want to believe in God anymore. Right, because they're upset of what has happened to them in their lives. Right, but that, that does show a form of arrogance in the heart. Because you believe that you, you deserve you know, the goodness that happened to your life. You deserve it. 
I deserve all goodness in your life. You know, none of us deserve anything in our lives. Right? Whether musibah happens to us, or whether it's calamity or blessing, or everything is part of the test of life. It's not a matter of whether you deserve a calamity or you deserve a blessing. No one deserves anything. It's all part of the test. Right? Your blessings are tests and your calamities are tests. That's all it is. Right? But the arrogant heart says to itself, no, I deserve, you know, I'm a good person. I deserve goodness in my life. And I don't deserve all these problems in my life. I don't deserve it. Right? No, it's such thing. You are in this world as a test. That's all. It's just a test. Everything's a test. Right? So it's not a matter of deserve or not deserve. It's a test. But people, because they go into that kind of mentality, right? they go into, after a while, disliking right? the one who has uh, decreed for everything to happen. They begin to dis- they dislike the, the, the creator himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, and turn away. And that's a dangerous part of the heart. So if Allah is going into it, the heart ca- is very dangerous. Uh, a person, you can see, a person can have a full sharia knowledge. They can be on the sharia for years. Right? But if their heart is not handled, something can happen and make them turn away from the religion. Just like that. It's very dangerous. <laughs> the heart is very scary. Yes? Very, very scary. That's why the ulama, they focus a lot on the study of the heart. Right. So what you can see, it, can, it will be an overnight thing. Because Rasul Sam, literally in the hadith it says, a, a believer will come to the morning as a believer, or a man will come to the morning as a believer, and come to the evening a disbeliever. And somebody will come to the evening as a believer, and come to the morning a disbeliever. Right? So, subhanAllah, you know, like this kind of hadith to the end of time, it will be, it will be to the end of time, it will be uh, common. I mean, it's not one or two, you know, common. People who will be who will be so called on the religion for years, right? They will come like if Allah Alam was the reason lah, right? But they will just turn away and let go everything that they have been taught or they have been doing all these years in the religion, right? And it has been going on in our time, and it, and it will it will get more and more and more towards the end of times, right? So may Allah subhanahu wa taala. So when we teach our children Islam, right? It's not just the fiqh. That you go into, you know, or the, the Aqidah, all that. You need to have an entire uh, uh, so-called curriculum about the heart. Right? The whole curriculum about the heart. Right? How do we attach their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do they see themselves with Allah subhanahu And also, and, and to, to do that, you must begin with yourself. Right? How do you see yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? You're not deserve, don't see yourself as deserving of anything. That comes to you, right? You are basically a creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You're His slave, and whatever He wants to do to you, you say Marhaba, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Right? Whatever Allah wants of me, do. That's it, do. And right? I will never get. I say Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I love Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, no matter what He does to me. I mean, in a sense, we need to bring them to that kind of you know mentality that's in the heart, like it's a heart mentality, right? that kind of mentality, so that they will never get upset with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Inshallah. Alright, so he says here, أَمَّا تَسْمَعُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخَلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَكَانَ الْمَيْلُ وَاتِّبَاعُ الْهَوَى بِقَلْبِهِ فَحَمَلَهُ ذَلِكَ عَلَى ذَنْبِ الْمَشْؤُومِ بِنَفْسِهِ Right, so this is the, 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 the inclination of the heart towards what is desires one. Right, what is uh, self wants eh? So that is all, uh, that is very apparent now, very apparent. That day my sister, my, my sister in law was asking all this talk lah about the self, the self, the self, the self, the self. It's a lot of talk nowadays, especially amongst like you will see even 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 in preaching, people preach a lot about self, about the self, right? The self. It's, it's not my opinion eh? It's just from what the ulama have said. They've never spoken about the self in a a positive light. The ulama have never done that. Right? Whenever they talk about the self, the nafs, it is always spoken about in a blameworthy light. They all the books. All the ulama, when they talk about the self, the nafs, it's always blameworthy. It's always blameworthy. It's always blameworthy. Right? Never, and the Quran says, don't sanctify yourself. Right? Don't, you know, don't, don't, don't say that, you know, subhanAllah. <laughs> but now, it's really on the other side. People, are, people, people go out and try to sanctify themselves because they see it as the solution to low self-esteem. Sanctify meaning praise himself. Huh? Like, like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm a power mom. I uh, see. Uh, I'm a super mom. 
I am. Sub- I'm. I'm. You're. You're doing. A, you know. That it's more of the I. 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 In some ways, it's you. It's but up to you, lah. It's pos- positive thinking, lah. In positive thinking, it's more of like it's. It's in that means that means you're ascribing to yourself. Ah, uh, you're ascribing to yourself. Uh, uh, basically, good virtues to yourself. Right? I'm not saying beat up yourself. You know, actually, you should. But then, <laughs> because the ulama, some of them beat up themselves. Right? They all do it. Right? Like you, 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 you have a lot of diseases. You have this. You have that. You have whatever. But they beat up themselves not to go into a depression. Right? They beat up themselves to improve. Right? Get up. Do something about it. Right? Don't, don't, don't be immature here. It is a form of immaturity to always to have self validation uh, to verify to verify yourself. Sanctify yourself is to self validify. That means to say that I, you know, like, you know, like all this movement, lah. You know, like they, they, the, the, the mother, what do they call it? The I don't know. All this woman feminist stuff that they, you, you, you do see it, right? It's sanctifying the self. You see, motherhood has been there since Sayyidina Hawa's time. It's been hard since that time. <laughs> I mean, I not I don't think it's it's actually harder now. <laughs> like they they since the, the Zahabiyat, all of them had it hard. Every single one of them, every it's just hard. That's all it is. It's hard. But you don't see the Zahabiyat going around, you know, saying that I am. A <laughs> I mean, the Zahabiyat, you didn't. They have no quoting of them saying, you know, like I am. No, we women are very <laughs> nothing. Right? You go to Tarim, you will not find any of them. Sanctifying the self. Uh, you know what I do? Oh, I do this and this and this. I'm power mom. <laughs> you don't find it at all, right? Do you? <laughs> you don't follow social media. <laughs> You're not aware of social media. <laughs> hey, this is this is all the, the, the girl power thing lah. <laughs> okay, you see, eh, I'm not saying it's wrong. But why why are people doing that? Feel good. Yeah, but why? Why? Focus why on the self. Why you have to put it out there? Yeah, put it out there. Why must it be said? Why must it? That's why lah. But see, see, it does show a form of inferiority complex. <laughs> it actually shows that you, you, you feel so inferior that you must exert yourself. You know, it's, it's like a like a cycle. Like you see, if you are not, if you don't have an inferiority complex, you don't care. About saying anything to anybody, you just do your work, duh. <laughs> you do your obedience, acts of obedience. You obey Allah subhanahu wa taala. You do your, your responsibilities. That's it. You don't go around trying to to, to validate yourself, right? Right. Yeah. So so saying to other mothers, you know, like may Allah reward you. May Allah knows the struggles you go through in the night. In the day, how you, tr- you you worry about them? That's fine. I mean, may Allah reward you, right? Right. But you see, the problem is that when it the, the word Allah is not in the discourse, it's you, you, you. You're so great. You're so this. You're so that. You're so. It's all about you. It's basically the sanctifying of the self, right? Ah. Uh, so you see what what the discourse has always been in the. In the past, this is all not, not, not my opinion. I don't like blame you, <laughs> I will hold me to account. It's not my opinion. It's basically what all all have said, right? Basically, right. If you want to, like, someone feels down about what they're doing, say, okay, Allah knows you're trying your best, right? Istighfar, do your salawats, right? And then try your best, right? And Allah subhanahu wa taala ask Allah to help you about, you know, on it. That's all. That's the answer. Simple, good enough, all right? But you don't have to like go on and on and on about and praise people. You know, like in the past, they don't really do this praising thing because people don't need this praising thing <laughs> because they just focus. What does Allah want of me, right? And da, tuje. What does Allah want of me? I will do it. Right. So that means that the self is not an important factor to these people. Right. They only focus on one, and that is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So you see, this is how the, the, the this this entire disease is going on. Right? A lot of Talk about the self. Focus about the self. Focus about you. About believing in you and loving you. And like, like you see, if as believers, our tradition is love of God, belief in God, place your ability in God, trust in God, surrender all your affairs to God. As I would do before we sleep, I surrender my affairs to Allah. 
that is that is what our tradition is about. Islam is never, ever, ever been about the self. It's a Western ideology that has crept into our da'wah actually. It's crept in, unfortunately. And people, they, 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 think, they seem to think that the solution to low self-esteem is this. That's not the solution to low self-esteem. Right? Low self-esteem is there because there's a focus on the self. Low self-esteem is as, as, as much of a disease as arrogance. There are basically two things and two ends of the spectrum, which the root is the same, which is focus on the self. And no and lack of focus on God. So that so this is how the solution right, or the, 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 the cure to arrogance is focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cure of low self-esteem is focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not trying to butter up the self. Uh, it's not because the more you butter up yourself, the more people actually either they go more into low self esteem or they go into arrogance thereafter. Right? The focus is you're in low self esteem because you focus too much on yourself. I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm this, I'm whatever. Like, you know, and then you go into a lot of focus on the self. Why are you, why are you so obsessed with yourself? <laughs> right? Some of low self esteem technically is, obsef- is obsessed with themselves, but in a negative light. Uh, as someone, if high self-esteem or arrogance is obsessed with self in a, in a, in a so they, they are actually equal diseases. They actually, you see what I'm saying? It's actually not my, when I was learning this, I was like, mashallah. They are equal diseases. They are exactly equal diseases. Arrogance and low self-esteem. Exactly equal diseases. And the root of it is focus on the self. That's the root. And so the cure is focus on God. That's all. That's a cure. Think about it, eh? <laughs> I mean, it's super thought, lah. Think about it, super thought. Right. So, mashallah. So, but then don't don't shoot me about it. Eh? It's not my my words. <laughs> it's what the scholars have have said, lah. It's a problem in our time. Alhamdulillah. That's why they they focus a lot on the curing of the heart. Right. It's only when the heart is diseased, then the heart will begin to to see things in all corrupt manners. In all, in all, it will not be able to analyze things properly. Because the heart is diseased. See that? The heart is diseased. <laughs> I don't know what you are thinking now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perspective, like, it's a perspective, right? SubhanAllah. It does go against the Western idea of a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I think because the Western culture is very The Western culture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Lack like, of focus on God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of this thing. Hmm. But, yeah, but then this. Yeah. And yet, the problem is same thing as in circles. And there's no inclusion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your whole life is dedication to Allah. That's what it's supposed to be. So, there's, so everything in life, solution is Allah. That's it. Right? So that's why it's a nice thing about how to motivate and whatsoever. If you don't bring in, talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're fooling yourself. You're just fooling yourself. Right? Because your whole life is us striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then inshallah by that, you see the fruit in the next one. That's it. Right, so if you're going to have the entire discourse, you know, free of the word Allah <laughs> or God, you know, not focusing on Allah or, 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 or you know, or the Sultan Allah, you're just fooling yourself. You're just fooling yourself. That's all it is. How do you snap yourself out? Quran. Quran. Nothing, nothing is stronger in snapping yourself out of anything <laughs> than Quran. Right, then nothing is stronger. Tafsir. Right, tafsir. It, it just, you, know, you go through tafsir, like, you like, <laughs> you leave a tafsir class, you're just, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're snapped. Right, you know, tafsir does things to you. Right, every single time, it does things to you. Hadith. You don't have to look so far. <laughs> Basically, what's left behind, as the Qalain, the Rasulullah says, I leave behind you. There's once, one, there was a hadith, the said, you know, I am, he was, he was once, he was uh, doing a khutbah, and he says, you know, oh people, I'm a human being like you. Waiting for the messenger of my Lord to come to me for me to answer, meaning the angel of death to come and I will answer and I will go. 
right? And so I mean, I'm at any point I'm about to go. So I leave behind for you two things, two weighty things. The Quran. I hold on to the Quran for, the, for in it is light and guidance. You know, you don't need anything besides this. <laughs> and my family. The hadith says my family. The other hadith it says my hadith. You know, uh, my, my, my sunnah. But uh, this is this particular hadith says my family. Hold on to my family. And all of us in my family who? The of, of from Sayyidina Fatima Zahra's uh, uh, lineage of the ulama of them. It means the scholars of them. Hold on to them. And don't let go. Right? They are the ship of salvation of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like how Nabi Noah has a ship of salvation, the, 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 the ark. Right? The, fa- the hadith, the family of Rasulullah is the ark. That right? means you hold on to them and you write them. And so all of these things, all get, you can snap out of it the moment you go back to our, the teachings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's very simple, it's all there. It's not new. <laughs> it's actually not new at all. So you go back to Mawagazi, it's all there. It's all there. And then we are spending time going through the heart because it's one of the most, in fact, it is the most important chapter. And the first thing you need to do is to, is, to, is to teach ourselves how to teach our hearts to think. And we're going to train our hearts to think. Then only can we nurture our children right, to have this kind of ideas in their hearts. How do they perceive their life? Right? What happens to them in their life? How do they perceive blessings and calamities? How do they perceive, you know, anything like in their life? They have to come to a situation, right? Because you can't just, you know, just, just stuff the sharia in down their throats. <laughs> you cannot do that. Right? They have to come and they have to be thinking. And then they have to fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once they fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, they're sailing. Right? They're sailing on their way. Right? All the way. This is our aim. This is our goal. And all of it goes down to the heart. Right, the heart needs to be taught. The heart does not know a lot of things. The heart, you must teach the heart. And the Quran is the one that's teaching the heart. The Quran is the strongest teacher of the heart. The Quran. Right. So Ibn Qadir is saying that, here lah, this thing. Right. It, it flips, it's difficult, you know, it's, it's all these things. But, it is the one organ you must focus on. Right. You can't neglect this one organ. Amma tasma'u qawluhu ta'ala wa nuqallibu af'idatahum وَأَبْصَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ وَنَذَرُوا وَنَذَرُهُمْ فِي فِي طُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, and, and Imam Ghazali have not heard Allah's words, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, you know, and we will turn their hearts, you know, their feelings, what's in their afida, their feelings, right? And they will, uh, uh, and we will turn their sights. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause you to turn by their own sins. So someone could one day be very strongly on something and the next day let go right, and go somewhere else. You know, it's na'uz billah. Right? It's, like, it's one thing about, about brotherhood in Islam, most sister in Islam, right, whereby when you are together in, a, in, uh, you know, in jama'ah, right, you watch out each other. And you watch out for each other. So you see one of, yours, one of your friends or your family stray. Right, or go into wrong ideologies or go into whatsoever, right? The brotherhood in Islam, you pull them back, right, to where it is. So it's easier to be in a jama'ah than if you're by yourself, you're alone, and you're trying to figure this out. Right, you can easily be pulled astray. Right, same thing, like, like, the, like the sheep, right, the, the flock of sheep, and then you have like the lone sheep, the wolf pulls it away. Right, this is one of the parables given, I think, in the hadith or one of the sayings of the scholars. Right, Shaitan right, looks for the lone one. The one who's known. Right? And Shaitan will go and he will be pulled away. Right? So if you keep staying in the Jama'ah, and the Jama'ah are who? Those people of the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. Right? Hold on to them, hold on to them, hold on to them, hold on to them, don't let go. Right? Follow the Jama'ah of these people. And right? inshallah, they will lead you to salvation. Right? So here, uh, uh, and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you know, when, if they keep doing their sins, they'll be left in their tyranny for them to destroy themselves. وَلِهَذَا الْمَعْنَى أَيُّهَا الرَّجُلُ He says, and for this meaning, O person, خَافَ عِبَادُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى الْخَوَاسُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ وَبَكَوْ عَلَيْهَا وَصَرَفُوا عِنَايَتَهُمْ إِلَيْ إِنَايَتَهُمْ إِلَيْهَا قال الله تعالى في وصفهم يخافون يوما تقلب تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار. And he says because of all of this 
the elect of the elect of Allah's servants, they are most afraid for their heart. The elect of the elect, the hands of the awliya, they are afraid. They're very afraid right, for their hearts right, and they cry in the night right, for the state of their hearts. And they cry in the night. And, uh, and they do all they can right, in whatever they are able to. And they will always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide their heart. Guide their heart. Guide their heart. Say so the du'a that we read uh, uh, before Tafsir, right? And so one part whereby I will read, Rabbi Shrahli Sodri, Waya Sirli Amri. And oh Allah, expand my chest and make my affair uh, uh, easy. And, and remove the knots in my tongue. And they understand my uh, speech. And they understand my speech. And they understand my speech. Right, so and the, the du'a says, and, and uh, uh, guide my tongue to say what is right. And guide my heart. Wahdi qalbi. You see, now our du'a before Tafsir, remember, there's one part whereby I will hold my, my chest and you will say the du'a. Rabbi Shrah li sadri wa sidi amri wa huzul muqim sani fa qawli wa sadi li sadi wa hadi qalbi wa fa'al kathalika bi ahababi abada wa rizukna kamal futuh al-arifin wa al-fiqh fi al-deen ma qamal ikhla sikul yakin wa al-afiyah wa qayna wa nasa wa hadi wa hifaz al-nafa wa hadi fa' wa khair darik wa amil al-arifin wa hadi fa' wa hadi fa' wa hadi fa' at the end of the du'a that is this part. So it goes and make my tongue say what is right. And guide my heart and do this to, to all those whom I love. So, the dua has that part. I do this to all those whom I love uh, uh, and, and give our and give us the full openings of those who understand. And to answer this region, I will full and complete, perfect, siddiq, truthfulness, and yakin, certainty. Wal afia, wal ghana, wal nasr, wal hifas, wal intifa'. Right? Wal afia, and good health. Wal ghana, to be, to be enriched by this religion, not need anyone else. Right? Uh, wal nasr, and help. Wal intifa' and benefit. Right? And goodness in this world and the next world. And the entire dua that we do at, at, at the end, all of it. Right? Basically. Because you want Allah to know, to be able to guide your hearts. You don't want to... To your hearts to, to be easily swayed right, by, by things in this world. Subhanallah. So before that, that dua was taught to me by Abba Maryam. I want to read that, that dua. Right, so you say, read that dua before you read, do any, any class. Right, but it's not in this book, so I didn't read it. So, <laughs> right, but it's in my, in my tafsir. Tafsir always. Because tafsir, when I'm, like, the thing about, about Quran is that Quran is, uh, is a guidance, but shaitan will always come to make you misunderstand the Quran. And use it for misguidance. The Quran can guide and it can misguide. As the Quran itself says, by it some are guided and by it some are misguided. Right? So whenever you come to the Quran, it's important to actually ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guard your heart. Right? And to guide your heart. Also guard and to guide right? your heart as you go through the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you will see that you've seen the, the fruits of that dua. Right? Whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the guidance to come. Right, through going through the Quran. So the, the, the elect of the scholars, they used to be very fearful. They used to cry in the night right, for the states of their hearts. And right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they, and they fear the day whereby hearts, hearts waver. And the day where hearts waver, right, and the and sights will waver. جَعَلْنَا اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ الْمُعْتَبِرِينَ بِالْعِبْرِ I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us and you people who listen to all these warnings. That means you pay attention to all these warnings. Right? 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 Right, it says, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be of those al-muhtammin uh, bi mawadi'in mawadi al-khatri wal muwafiqina uh, li islahi qulubihim right, the ones who really focus right, on, you know, on this place where, where thoughts you know, and ideas happen to focus on it to make it the most important the most prioritized place right, and, for, uh, and, and the place whereby you try to uh, to correct your ideas and your opinions Right, that, that is your heart, and Allah is the most merciful of those who have mercy. Right, for in qila inna amrahal al qalbi la muhim mun jiddan. So if you say 
that the so now is we are we're convinced right that this affair of the heart is very important and we're convinced we know it's very important fa akhbirna anil maani allati ati tus tusdihu wa anil afat allati tu'ridhu fa tasuduhu asa an nuwaffaq an an nuwaffaq an al ijtihad fi al amal bi zalik Right, so now we know what is the important. This heart is very important. So tell us now, what can we do to rectify our hearts, and what can we do to protect our hearts from what will destroy? Right, so it's come to that point. So now he says, "Qul lahu alam, and know an al tafsil hadhi al maani la tawilun, la yhtamilhu hadh al kitab, wa inna ma ulama al akhirati." عنو بح باستخراج ذلك وتصنيفه في هذه النكتة لا غير وقد ذكروا في في ما يحتاج إليه من ذلك نحو تسعين خصلة محمودة وفي أض وفي أض وفي أضداد ها مزمومة ثم من الأفعال والمساعي المساعي والواجبة والمحزورة نحو ذلك في سائر تفاصيلها. Right, so he says here, know that what you have just asked about, you know, how to rectify the heart and this of the heart is a very long discussion. Right, it's a lot. Right, the scholars have come up to. Ninety traits or attributes that the heart should have that is that is uh, praiseworthy, and the opposite of these ninety like, are blameworthy. Ninety yeah, right, has come. That is uh, the, the affairs of the heart. Ninety traits that the, the heart has. <laughs> ninety. <laughs> you keep going on the same ones, you know, arrogance, showing off, <laughs> uh, jealousies, right? Say no, no insecurities, love of this world. Same ones you're going around, but here there are ninety. Right, ninety uh, characters of the heart. Right, they are blameworthy, and you have those that are uh, praiseworthy uh, on both sides. Eh? Right, and and inshallah, he wali umri inna min ahimahu amrudinihi. Right, so inshallah next week we'll continue. Right, uh, with the affair of the heart, he really spends quite a, quite a bit of time. Right, uh, going through it, he does break it down to four main diseases. Right, because these are the main ones people basically they encircle. Right, there is four main diseases, which is which is long hope. Right, long hope means like having long hope, like al amal. It's called amal. Right, having long hope meaning it means that you don't think you're gonna die anytime soon. It's praiseworthy, and also it's blameworthy. Right, it's blameworthy. Right, you don't think you're gonna die anytime soon. So because of that, you procrastinate your religious affairs. Because you don't think you're gonna die anytime soon. That's called amal. That means having long hope, long life. And it's one of the strongest, most destructive diseases that people, that human beings have. You think that oh no, I have like twenty more years to live, thirty more years to live. You know, maybe up to sixty I will live, up to seventy I will live. No one promised you anything. Tomorrow, even today is not promised to you. I mean, the next hour is not promised to you. You, you really, you really never, you really don't know. And then you have uh, al istiajal, uh, haste. Haste is, haste is also a, a disease. He will go into it, lah. Haste and then hasad and kibber, right? Jealousy and arrogance, right? Every single one of it. And so the opposite of it will be good, good, good traits, which is not to have long hope, right? Not not to think you live for long, but to work for your akhirah now, right? Uh, uh, and to and then the opposite of haste is to do things thoroughly and properly. Because for us, we haste through our ibadah. There's haste in our ibadah. We do it quickly, get it over and done with. Right? No. All uh, it is praiseworthy to actually ta'ani. Ta'ani means to take it step by step. Right? Uh, and then hasad, the opposite of it is to be sincere to the creation. To love for the creation more than what you love for yourself. Right? And then uh, kibar, the opposite of it is humility. Inshallah, next week we will go to that part. Any questions about this? Zara, any questions about this? We go through this book one time, and then this book, this book basically, once you go through it one time with a teacher, 
it needs to be read over and over again. It's not a one-time off learn this book. It's really not. I'm sure you know this by now. Eh? It's not a one-time learning of a book. It has to be read over and over and over and over again until you actually begin to uh, uh, understand certain things <laughs> of what he's saying. Or you begin to, add, of course, begin to act on what this is about. Question. Any questions? Yes, that the other limbs do not get, uh, that that distinguishes the heart from other limbs. Why is 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 a more, I mean, is more important for us to focus on it, right? Because the other limbs don't get it. it should be the heart, yep. <laughs> it should be the heart. Okay, all right. صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أن الله يكون على من نافع ما خلق مستعلم ودلالة على الخدع ويصل على مسلا الله يسلم الله رحيم وعلي من المشاكنة صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم ده يسير يسير by my life if someone will حياتي هذا يسير وعمري وعمري هذا يسير نعربي وعمري by my life if someone is seriously concerned about the state of his religion if he is alarmed by the slumber of the heedlessness and if he examines himself with care, it will not be too much for him to acquire all that knowledge and put it into practice for so long as all laws bound life and able to succeed. Like I say, if you're here in his 90s, that's so much. He's like, are you serious about this affair? If you're serious, 90 is no problem. You will do it. You will do it. <laughs> it's only when you're not serious. <laughs> about this the, the fear of this life <laughs> yeah and he does point you to his area yeah. yep he does <laughs> yeah, here will take a few years <laughs> not, not a few years eh? your whole life lah. Eh? <laughs> and we should do it here seriously because I mean the ulama say that those who don't do that don't, don't do the here they have no life they are dead they are dead those who don't do the here they are dead but the Ikhya is, you know, really, mashallah. I'm not going to do the entire thing. I'm going to do parts of it. So, they, so, they, so I can also do it. I, I decided I'm not doing it. <laughs> I went through Surah Zainab. Uh, part, uh, the first part of it, then I left Tarim. And the first part of it, she took five years, eh? This is the first part. Right, so it's never, it's never my choice. <laughs> I was only there for four years. <laughs> and then I left. So, so she didn't, you know, the Ikhya is not. And, but Habib does it here every day. He takes, uh, it's in the rawha. He does it like, they will read uh, sections of the ahiyah every single day. I can do a translation of Habib's lessons. <laughs> but it's daily, Habib. Ah, <laughs> huh? No translation. I can do a translation. La. I can do a translation of it. Huh? Yeah, daily. Daily, daily. In the rawha. And after, after asara time. It's always a segment whereby you read from the Ikhya al I used to follow. I used to follow, but now very hard to follow. Okay, so Allah Allah Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Al-Fatiha anna Allah ya rizqul a'im al Al-Fatiha. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashru an la ilaha ila anta astaghfirka. Wa tubu ilaik, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa 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 alayhi w